Now, I've been taught in my own life in many different ways from ritual abuse to wrong Christian teaching that I needed to be strong and that I needed to never show any negative emotions from mild disappointment to anger to stress. I was taught a good Christian always has a positive face. And they use scriptures to teach me that. And so wanting to be a good Christian, I believed it. So because of my background, I wanted to be strong. And they taught me that God wanted me to be strong too. And I believed that. And I got into the word of faith teaching. It was just what I'd been wanting to hear. I mean, I just wanted it so bad. They taught me some really good things. They taught me that God never sends bad things to us. They taught me that, um, that when bad things happen, it's from the fallen world and not from God. That was really wonderful. But they taught me a lot of other things because they believed it that was straight from the serpent's belief system. So I listened to them and I became strong. I worked the works, and I tamed the tasks, and I looked good. I got to say it. I looked good. Looked. You know the outside of the cup? <laughs> it's real easy to clean the outside of the cup sometimes, except with the people you're living in the house with. But it's real easy to have the outside of the cup look good when you're outside of your home for an hour here or an hour there. I did more and more. I looked better and better. I worked hard, and I excelled, and I got so much joy and contentment from my many works. One day, about six years later, I woke up, and I didn't know what had happened to my relationship with God. I thought, well, it's probably just because I don't need him so much anymore because I'm so strong now. And so I'm not going to him all the time for everything because I don't need him for everything anymore. You know, I'm not like that little toddler that has to ask their mommy and daddy for everything. I'm a mature Christian now, so I don't need God all that much. Ha! I didn't even know what it meant to be a mature Christian then. But I thought that I had reached the goal. And the sad thing was, I thought I had reached the goal that God had for me. I acted always happy. And I'm going to share a couple of the techniques that I used to do that. <laughs> I was resting in the condition of my surroundings to tell me I was whole and as I should be. When you start doing that, you have to run from all the circumstances that try to tell you that you're not as you ought to be. So you start to run from life, but you're not aware of it because you're thinking that you're doing what God wants you to do. I didn't realize it at the time, but I was wallowing in my own filthy rags. I had fallen down and succumbed to the temptation that's common to man. I was living the serpent's plan for me. And all the while, I thought I was pleasing God. Oh, and securing a great reward for myself in heaven. Don't forget that. That was an amazing motivator. That the more I did here, and the harder I worked, and the more I excelled, God had a bigger crown for me. I was sure my crown was so big that I'd fall over when it got on my head. I was taught many self-help techniques. I used what came naturally to me was to stay busy, to stay busy with good works. And that worked really good for me because not only did it keep the pain pushed away, but I was getting that bigger crown all the time. So it was doing two things for me. Yeah, I was going to have quite a mansion. <laughs> I was taught many self-help techniques. I read many self-help books. If somebody gives you a self-help book, run. 
if the title has a number in it, you know, five ways to this, three ways to the, run. I'm telling you, run. It looks good. The cover's going to be uh, very wooing to you. But I'm telling you, it's the serpent's belief system that you're getting ready to read. I was told, this is one of the things I was told. I was told that if I was feeling depressed or in the middle of a pity party, what I should do, do, is I should find somebody around me that was less fortunate than I was. So then I would be grateful for what I had. Hey, that sounded pretty good to me. And it worked pretty good too, it seemed. So when the pain from something in my life came to me, I would go look for somebody in worse circumstances than I was. That's easy. You can always find somebody in worse circumstances than you are. Then I would feel relieved, and I'd, oh, I'm happy. I got it pretty good. And the circumstances that I was in, they wouldn't seem so bad. Did you hear anywhere in there me say the name Jesus? Oh, no. No. Did you hear anywhere in there about the faith of the Son of God? No. Is there one scripture in the Bible that says to do that? Maybe in Hesitations, chapter 6, verse 66. So let's look at the blunt truth. What I was saying pretty much was, I need your life to suck so I can feel better about my life. And who I am. Man, when we say it in black and white, you can tell where that's coming from. That's ugly. That is from the serpent. It's his wisdom. The last several months have been pretty hard for me. God has been tearing down, or I guess I like to call it digging up, these roots in me of self-preservation. It hasn't been easy and it hasn't been fun. I've experienced a lot of emotional pain. And at the beginning, I didn't know why. And at the beginning, I ran from the pain. I found a lot of people that were in worse circumstances than me. I stayed really busy. I ate a lot of comfort food. All the things that had worked for me before. But they weren't working anymore. <laughs> and you know why? Because the truth, the faith of the Son of God has been being poured into me for the last four years. And those lies just weren't getting it anymore. And I could tell it wasn't, but I was still stuck in all this pain. And I didn't know what to do. I cried a lot, and I didn't know why. I felt like I was falling apart all the time. But what I didn't know was what was happening was a good thing. What was dying was the serpent's belief system in me. And sometimes that is painful. Sometimes it's hard for us to let go of the things that appeared to work and to be willing to feel weak. That was my one thing. I did not want to feel weak. I didn't want to appear weak. And as the weakness was there more and more, I became more and more afraid. But God was at work in my heart. He was digging out those old belief systems and was showing me that anything that I tried to do in my own strength really wasn't working. I had just believed lies. It had never worked. All it had done was get stuffed down. All the pain was still there. I was just kidding myself by medicating myself in whatever way the world offered to me. God wants to persuade our hearts that we don't have to do anything when we're in the pain. We don't have to fix it. Boy, I, I grew up all the time when somebody's in pain, it's my responsibility to fix it. That's not true. That's what Jesus came to do. 
Jesus said, I will give you rest when you're heavy laden and burdened. Not, I want you to take care of it for yourself. He didn't say that. He said, let me do it for you. God wants to persuade your hearts that you don't have to do anything. Even your ability to believe doesn't have to come from you. Isn't that amazing? He takes it down to the lowest level for us and says, you know, I'm going to give you my faith. It's going to be my faith. You don't have to drum up your own faith. You don't have to strain to get it. You're going to hear it. He's going to bring it to you. He's going to speak it to you. And he's going to lead you into this amazing rest that he's prepared for you. It only comes from him, and we can't create a counterfeit.